All right, welcome along. My name is Bosch. This is Bosch's Ableton Beginner Bits. And today we're going to be taking a look at a MIDI controller instead of actually Ableton itself. We're going to be looking at the Akai MIDI Mix. This thing is probably one of the most famous MIDI controllers out there, especially when it comes to dub reggae. And it looks like a mixing board, but it is very versatile and very flexible. Now, before we get started, I always have to tell you about buymeacoffee.com forward slash Bosch Dubs. You can go there and support this channel for the price of a coffee. But what is more appreciated tenfold is channel interaction. Like, share, subscribe, comment, all that business. Go watch all videos. Find something you like. It helps us get these videos to more people like you who want to know this stuff. And that's it. So let's get into it. Now, I've got a project here. It's a steppers tune. It's like a bit of a, bit of a weird steppers, a bit like a circusy, maybe like a Turkish sort of vibe. <laughs> All right, and I'm just going to show you how to set up the MIDI mix. The first thing and the most important thing to know is Control and M, or if you're on a Mac, I believe it'll be Command M. And what this does is turns everything blue and brings up a menu. Now, I'm going to delete all these here because these are from one of the previous takes of me trying to record this video and having dodgy audio. So we're back to scratch. So when you press Control and M on your track, this is what will happen. Everything will turn blue and you'll end up with a blank set list section on this left hand side. Now all you need to do to map something is click on the thing you want to be controlled and then you're going to move the thing you want to control it with. That's it. So click what you want to control, move what you want to control it with. So let me show you how that works. I've got the kick channel here, I've got the fader. I'm going to click on the kick fader and then I'm just going to move fader number one on the MIDI mix. All right. Now we can see two things have happened. One, we've got the, this bit here, the 2 slash 2 5 here. And then we've got a new list item in this list window on the left. Now, this number here corresponds to these numbers here. So we've got 2 slash 25. It's on MIDI channel 2, and it's control number 25. And that's just so that the computer understands where the information's coming from and sends it to the right controller. You'll see as I do this, there'll be different, every knob's got a different number set to it. All right. Now, if I do control and M now and move this knob, so you'll see we've now got control of the kick fader. Now, the problem is this kick fader is going all the way up to six and then all the way down to minus infinity. I don't want that bigger range. I want to bring the range in a little bit. All right, so what I'm going to do is control and M to open up the MIDI option again. I'm going to click on this and you could set it to zero, and that would mean that the the level would never go above zero, but I'm going to set it to the level of my track. So the fade is set to minus 1.9. So I'm going to set this to minus 1.9. All right. Now, when I control an M again to come out, now when I move this kick fader, it goes all the way down to minus infinity, but it only goes up to 1.9. Even when I push that fader right to the top, it only goes to 1.9 on there because that's what I've set it to. All right. So what this means, I can go through now and set each one of these across the whole track. And then in theory, the levels won't change when I set all these to max. So I'm going to do that now. Control and M. Click on the snare fader. Move the fader you want the snare to be controlled by. And then take this number and put it in the max box. So minus 5.4. I'm going to do it for the hats. Click on the hat fader. Move the fader you want to use to control it, and then take this number in the square and put it in there, minus seven. All right, I'm going to do this for the rest of them without talking you through it now. So I think you can all see what's going on. That's shakers at percussion, minus three, four. I don't think there's a, a faster way to do this. Minus 8.8. .8. But once it's set up, you're golden. You're good to go. So we need number six is for the skank. And that's 9.1. Melody, minus 13.4. And then melody 2, minus 11.5. All right. So now you've got your track set up and ready to dub. And the levels are going to stay how you set them for like the general level of the track. So let's go through each one and just bring it in one by one. I'm going to take everything down. Everything down. Sorry, the tripod for the camera's in the way, so it's a bit fiddly. 
All right, let's play the track. And I'm just going to bring in the kick. Now I'm going to bring in the snare. Hats. Shaker's percussion. It's actually a ride cymbal. Bass. Skank. Melody one. And then melody two. All right, so you can see these faders, I can push them all the way up to the top, but they're always gonna max out on that max level that you set in the MIDI control. All right, so that's volume faders done. The next thing I wanna do volume wise is show you how to do a button. So we're gonna do the same thing, control and M. And then what I'm gonna do is click on the kick drum and I want to set the on off button of the kick drum to the mute button on the MIDI mix. So I'm gonna go over here. I've clicked on the number two there. I'm gonna press the mute button. And we've got another one, note to F6, which is what that button represents. It's going from the kick, the mixer, and it's the speaker on control. Now notice that there's no min and max on this one. That's because it's a button, it's on or it's off. There's no range in between. You've got on or you've got off. So I'm gonna go across and do each one of these. So now, pressing the wrong buttons there. So you'll notice the lights weren't really corresponding properly with what we're going on there. I don't know why that is. Sorry, I can't explain that, but the lights weren't really corresponding with what we're going on there. But anyway, let's carry on. So we've done a button, on off, simple. The last thing we need to look at is the pan pot for the sends and the returns. If you don't know what a send and return is, go check out one of the videos on the channel where I explain what they are. It's an external effect that you're sending sound to. So when you turn the original like source sound off, the effect can carry on going on its own. That's what it is. Uh, so are you gonna do the exact same thing? I'm gonna do Control and M. And I'm gonna use all the A knobs on there. I'm gonna assign to this first knob all the way across. So I'm just clicking on the knob there, move the knob on the mini mix that I want to control it with. And that assigns it, and that's it. And let's do the B while we're here as well, and let's put that on the, the second one. Okay, now, if I move this, let's say this one on the melody channel, you can see it's moving the send. And that's it, you're all set up to dub. So what I'm gonna do, just a minute or so, I'm just gonna have a quick jam and show you how everything's working.
So apart from that, the only other thing I want to show you is that you can assign multiple sends or any parameter on here. You can assign them to one knob. So let's delete the reverb ones for the drums. And then I'm going to go through, and for each one, I'm going to move the same knob. So I'm going to move this top left knob. I'm going to click on this and do it, and then that one, and then that. Okay. And now, if I solo the drums, you'll see now I can control all those sends with one knob. I think that's it. I think that's everything you need to know. That's that's really good for if you if you're limited and you want to you know assign multiple things to one knob because you've got limitations. It's perfect. But yeah, that's it. I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to tell you any more because I think that's all you need to know. My name's Bosch. This has been Bosch's Ableton Beginner Bits. First video back for quite a while. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Ciao.